Hey every dollies! I'm Tell of Telly Dollies. Finally, after a long break, I'm back! I'm back! And I'll grab this opportunity to thank all of you for supporting my channel because we just reached a thousand subscribers! I hope you will still support me along the way because more art dolls are going to be customized real soon. And now, on to the video! Our theme for this collab is retro anime. So basically any animes from the 70s up to early 2000s. From anime series, featured films, and OVAs. I made this doll along with these wonderful artists. The character I chose is Mima Kiragoe from Perfect Blue. Perfect Blue is a 1997 Japanese animated psychological thriller film directed by Satoshi Kon. I really love this film and how every time you watch it, you'll learn a new detail that you didn't consider before. The amount of skills the animator placed into this film is just outstanding. Satoshi Kon is one of the directors I've been really a fan of aside Yoshiaki Kawajiri. No wonder this film became an influence even in western movies such as Black Swan and Requiem for a Dream by Darren Aronofsky. But I'll stop my fangirling with this film because I can talk for hours regarding animation in general. I chose Mima Kiragoe but, spoiler alert, if you're planning to watch this film and you don't want to be spoiled, then feel free to mute this part. This version of Mima is not really her but a projection of Rumi as Mima. So yeah, it's weird to address her as Mima when she's not really Mima. Anyways. That's the only spoiler I'll give, so here are some references I found. Also, thankfully, I saw a model sheet of her in this outfit. So let's get started. I'll be using this Ever After High body and an AliExpress head. This Ever After High body has a broken neck peg. Before I started this project, I decided to experiment with it and the neck peg looks sturdy now. The body is also sanded down. Let me know if you want to see how I fix the neck peg. As for the head, I've already changed the shape of the nose because there's a certain nose shape for Mima. So I curved the nose bridge out. Moving on to her outfit, I'm using this thin deep red satin fabric that I've made a pattern It'll have separation like corset, but also it's a one-piece suit. So I've cut this out two times because I'm thinking of making a lining inside. think of it, this is the first simplest custom I'll make so far. I did decided to go for a simpler one because I don't want to take my free time for granted since I haven't had much lately. My profession as a part of the animation industry itself is really time consuming. So. After I've sewn the pieces together, I realized that the corset suit will be too bulky if I'll add lining inside. 
So, by lining. I'll just sew the bottom underwear part, then we'll move on to adding the eyelets. When I bought the eyelets, it didn't came with a tool set. It was really embarrassing that I didn't know how to use it back then. So, I used an ice pick and a hammer to seal it down. Make sure when you're pinning it down, the inner part you're hammering is straight or the eyelet will lose its original shape. Suit layer done. The original design for Mima in this outfit didn't have an opening like this at the back. Since I don't want to use velcro and I also don't have a mini zipper, I decided to take creative freedom. <laughs> I'm really thinking way too much on how I really imitate the tutu skirt. I didn't want to make it fluff down like a normal Lolita idol skirt. So, I've decided to make the base skirt a three full circle skirt. Maybe this will give me enough volume to work on. I've already finished one circle and I'll move on to making the other two. Now that all the circles are done, I'll sew them up together. This is the first layer of the skirt. I'll pin all the waves I want for the final lay down of the skirt, then sew them permanently. layer done now earlier you saw that I've also cut smaller circles it's for the second skirt layer I am sewing the mini circles together here and after I'm done I've realized that circle pattern skirt has a really big wave pleat style and it didn't land well with how the first layer looked like 
So I thought of another method on making a skirt, which is just a normal box pleat skirt, which looks better together with the big waves of the first layer. So I just cut a long rectangle and glued the pleats in place. After I'm done with the second layer, it's time to attach the skirt layers together. I bought some thin socks and it's a really nice fabric even for a small scale it's soft and cottony I've also found this perfect pumps for her. Since I'm aiming for film accuracy, Monster High and Ever After High shoes are really too extravagant and I'm so happy to see this pumps good for 1-6 scale figures. Now for her umbrella. I used a frosted ziplock bag to imitate the waterproof texture and a chopstick that I've already sanded down to make its final shape. And I got this idea somewhere that the wood will somehow soften if I just submerge it in hot water. <laughs> While still doing that, I'm just creasing the fabric itself for it to be easier to pose once I start attaching it to the chopstick. So, it didn't work out, but I found a new alternative. But sorry, I haven't captured the assembling part because I continued making this while recovering from my surgery. Since the wood didn't bend to my expectations, I used this screw as a handle to attach it at the end of the chopstick. Now moving on to the body blushing. I've already patched the color of the neck peg too of cam. I've also bought new brushes specifically for blushing. So I will hope I'll get a better blending process since these are makeup brushes. When I'm body blushing, I usually start with the pink tones since it'll make the doll look more alive and it'll help me figure out where I'll add some contours to. Recently, I've been practicing on drawing anatomy and getting to be familiar with how to draw the body parts. Somehow, it's easier to pinpoint to where to contour and where to add redness. 
The red parts of the skin are mostly where the skin is thin, like the middle of the chest, joints, cartilage, and the contours are usually where the shadows will be. Then I'm also painting her arm white because she's wearing long white gloves. To her hair. I've already prepared yarn wefts off cam and also a wig cap. I've realized it's easier to style the hair like a wig because I can just remove it freely without worrying when I do the face up. I've started gluing wefts from the back then work my way to the top. Finally, I've finished attaching all the weft. I also made a hairline for her since she has her middle part showing to seal the direction of the wefts. I'll steam her hair using the steamer. Now on to styling. I usually use three things. Mini scissors, toothpick, and a razor. I'm trying to figure out how I'll section the bangs and her side hair is also pulled back behind her ear. Given that yarn hair is easier to style but it's really bulky. I don't want to give her a big hair so we're going to trim a lot of it down. I usually start thinning down the back part. Then section from the bottom, again thin down and trim specifically with scissor. Mm -hmm. 
I usually use the toothpick to separate layers of the hair. When I'm finally satisfied with the length and the style, I'll seal it again with the steamer and hairspray. The wig is done! Now on to the face up. I finally managed to capture clips of me making the face up. It's really hard for me to record it because I usually pull the doll really close to my face. So I'm sorry if my face is somehow in frame too. <laughs> I'm really slow on making face-ups. <laughs> I'm taking tons of time when figuring out the eye shape. With this scale, it's really hard for me to keep my hand from shaking so much. So I'm really making things slowly. If you also noticed, I tried capturing in a different angle than usual with the face up and the wig styling. I'm really trying my best to capture as much as I can since in my previous videos, most of the work I made is out of cam. I also decided to make her face simpler and not too extravagant.
will just add the gloss to the eyes and lips and I'll also show the face up when it's done. Who's ready for the assembling time? Now may I present to you Mima Kirigoe And that's it! What is your favorite part of the video? And do you also like specific retro animes? I personally think that looking back and knowing some animes from the 80s up to early 2000s help upcoming artists realize the appeal of simplicity. I admire how they were able to create diverse shows with different art styles, high quality animation, partnered with more mature stories or vibe, especially the OVAs and films back then, even though the tech wasn't as advanced as we have today. This video summarizes what I'm trying to say. Link is in the description below. Please also check the dolls my friends made. Link to their videos are listed in the description box below. I hope you had a great time watching this video, and if you did, Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, then be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification button to be updated. I'll be releasing more photos of Mima on my Instagram page, so be sure to check it out. Until next time, dollies!